literally, I like to call myself like the blind Pele, you know, because I'm always kicking, <laughs> kicking wet four sides, you know what I mean? So, yes. Welcome to Low Vision Moments, the podcast all about those sometimes frustrating, potentially embarrassing, but often pretty comical things that happen when you are just going about your day with visual impairment, blindness, and in my case, albinism. I am your host, I'm Jenny Bovard, and this is episode number 38. Like any year, you know, 2023 certainly had its ups and its downs, but one thing is for certain, we had a roster full of really stellar guests on the podcast. They were not only engaging and fun, but they were so open and genuine, and they brought both hilarious and thought-provoking stories to the podcast table. And it's this time of year that I'm reflecting on all of this, and I thought that This episode would be a great time to count down the top five best low vision moments of 2023. And you know, we couldn't do this without you, the lovely people enjoying low vision moments. So I want to say thank you so much for your support from the bottom of my heart. And just for you, I got decisive for once and handpicked these top moments of 2023. First up, I have an honorable mention. At the start of this episode, we heard from Ben Aquaco on Blind Pele. Ben co-hosts the CNIB Living Diverse podcast, and he joined me for episode number 33 called Shameless. And ever since then, that Blind Pele reference has been picking up steam, not only in my everyday language, but plenty of other people are talking about Blind Pele. Because it turns out Ben and I are not the only people inadvertently kicking shit on the daily. (laughs) Blind Pele even strikes again in episode number 37, Human Origami with Jen Fancy. All right, let's kick things off here, just like Blind Pele would, with number five, which is found in episode number 34, Don't Sit in the Dip with Ramia Amuthan. Ramia co-hosts Kelly and Ramia uh, on AMI, and she also co-hosts the AMI Audiobook Review Podcast. When she and I got together, we discussed a lot of different things, but one common theme was times in our lives when we would either not acknowledge or deliberately hide our disability, or perhaps the people around us choose not to acknowledge or discuss our disability, our blindness, or visual impairment, whatever it might be for you. But it comes in different scenarios. It depends on the company that we're in, perhaps. But Ramya also made it clear to me that it could depend on the culture that we are immersed in as to whether or not we acknowledge or the people around us choose to acknowledge our disability and how they might do that. I've sat completely in food as well. I've completely sat in a meal before when I was in Sri Lanka and there the faking of blindness was surreal. Like, I don't know what about it. When I think back at these things, I'm like, why wouldn't I just, why wouldn't people just talk about, you know, Ramya needs help. But um, it was really interesting. We had some kind of a formal-ish family gathering where everybody was very, you know, no, you go first. No, you eat. No, you. And <laughs> the food was Sri Lankan food. So it was like crab curry, very seafood, crab curry, um, rice, dal, like things that you would put in a plate, but there was just a lot of everything or a little of everything. And somebody, I guess, had put their food down because they wanted to go grab something that they forgot. I was scouting out the entire time a seat for me, right? And I had this spot picked out. I was like, okay, um, I know I've explored. This is where I'm going to sit when I go to get my food later and come back. This is my spot. It's perfectly in lighting that I can see the food. I can see the chair. I can see who's sitting across from me. And I had scouted this food up. But little did I realize that somebody had left their food there because they went to go to the kitchen. So I went all confident, by the way, because I had already scouted the spot out and went to go sit on this um, seat. And my ass was in their food. Like it was absolute crab curry on my bum. 
<laughs> from somebody's plate. How do you recover from that? My aunt came over and she was like, okay, let's just walk away slowly. Let's go get you some <laughs> pants. You <laughs> poor thing. It's not a good look, Ramia. Sitting in the food is one thing, but the aftermath. <laughs> Wait, what that plate of food? Like, that plate of food literally looked like someone sat in it. Like, it was <laughs> half on me. Half so you just, la you just exited the scene. You just left. Well, I think my aunt did her best to kind of cover me up while we walked. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole time, nobody was acknowledging my blindness. Like, it was just still the elephant in the room. It was so... Even after this point, you were like, I'm sorry, sure my were... eyes don't fucking work. <laughs> sorry. Like... No, it's like, could yeah. it happen to anybody? That's so strange. Why would I sit in that food? Oh, well, silly. Why would anyone put their food on a chair? Again, that Again. is my question. Again. See, that's not a you problem. That's a them problem. No, it is. But then Both it becomes your pants stories. problem. <laughs> <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> Stop sitting in food, Ramia. This is our PSA. This is our public service announcement. Don't put food on places where people might potentially sit. Look. I say this all the time on the podcast, us blind and visually impaired people, we're walking amongst you, we are everywhere, and whether we're advertising that we're blind or visually impaired or not, we're, we, we might be in the vicinity. That public service announcement of just don't leave food where someone could potentially sit, that is not just for the sighted world, that is for everybody. Just don't do it. Don't leave food on an ottoman. Don't leave it on a bed. Don't leave it on a chair. It seems logical, but just, just let's just all take note of that, okay? I'm putting the soapbox away and we are moving on to number four on the top five low vision moments of 2023. In episode number 32, I got to chat with Casey Greer and Cassandra Mendez of the Rare with Flair podcast. They're two best friends, truly living their best lives, and they both live with a rare form of albinism called Hermansky-Pudlak syndrome, HPS. Our episode is called Bad Medicine because we, decide, we discuss a lot of the medical side of things. And I'm just going to warn you right now, there's a shit joke incoming. My life is consistent, like, shit jokes because uh, as... As part of Hermansky Pudlak syndrome, I have um, I was diagnosed with colitis almost over over ten years ago now. Um, and when I was around eighteen, I got my colon removed because bleeding disorder plus sick intestines makes for life threatening bleeding situations. And so um, I have been without a colon for about for over eight years now. Um, so it's hilarious because yes, I just I have my shit on my person like I carry it on me at all times so I've had relatively few I mean just compared to other people with ostomies that I know um, I've had relatively few situations but it's impossible to have none and it's just I, I, there's constant enjoyment out of everything that it entails so I mean I was at the airport recently and I have a guide dog so normally when I'm at the airport I go through the metal detector and I don't have to go through the little body scanner thing that's at the airport in the U.S. So anyway, I was, because I was traveling internationally though, I didn't have my guide dog with me and I had to go through the body scanner. And I forget that every single time I go through the body scanner, they see there's something special up there. Like, what are you stashing in your front? I need to know. And so they, like, I'll walk out and they're like, so, um, so so can I just um can I give you a little a little rub like like it, just, it feels very I hope like they don't consensual. do they say it like that can I give you a little <laughs> rub like, I've never had anyone in the airport talk to me like that they're like they're really nervous oh. about it because it's like close to oh, my crotch okay. uh, yeah. and so yeah. that's why they have to they, they're kind of nervous about asking like can you can I pat is it okay if I pat down this area and then I usually disclose and I'm like, sure, yeah, I have an ostomy bag just so that they know. Uh, because if not, they will totally interrogate me. But like on my way back, I had not gone to the bathroom recently. I was on like a seven hour flight. And when it, I mean, it gets full. So I have like a bulge on me because I have to go. And 
like this woman's like really like trying to approach with caution she's so what 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 and i was like oh i've got an ostomy bag she was like is it okay if i pat down the ears like i'm sure i mean i'd approach with caution because i haven't gone to the bathroom in a minute and she kind of rubs it and i can just hear the (laughs) oh no (laughs) And and she's just like caressing my bag full of shit and <laughs> that's just an you know, no, so I, that's a t-shirt caressing I, I, my bag I, full of shit right <laughs> <laughs> they make me rub it and then they test my hands to make sure i didn't like put drugs in there i what? felt like wow. they made it was what? fine really? but they make yeah they test my hands wow. oh yeah, so if you ever want to stash drugs, I guess it has to be back. Go through the full <laughs> surgery to get your colon removed, just so you can bring drugs. Then airplane. got it. <laughs> it would be complicated. A, it's really, it's really thinking, you know. That's yeah. a level of commitment. I I don't know a lot of if a lot of people have that. Right. I thought going through security was a pain in the ass, but I I you know you don't think of these things as someone that doesn't have that lived experience or like any any close relationships with anyone that has had that experience (laughs) the best things about that conversation with Casey and Cassandra not only their openness to discuss these things that you know those of us without that lived experience or a personal a close relationship with someone who might have those experiences uh, I'm so grateful for that but also they gave me a great education on hermansky pudlak syndrome, on HPS, and they are just so much fun. So go and check out the Rare with Flair podcast. It's available on your major podcast platforms. Let's roll right along with swag to number three on the top five low vision moments of 2023. Blind swag is a higher state of being. And I can't take credit for coining that term. That was, again, another brilliant idea of guest. And that guest is MDB, Mike Dow. He's a rapper based out of Moncton, my hometown, representing very well, mind you. And in this podcast, we get really vulnerable. We talk about things that we might not talk to to a lot of people about. It might not come up, but Mike, MDB, and I got into some things that some people wouldn't be brave enough to talk about at any time. And we all have similar stories, but we don't have, I don't, I don't know that I would even share these stories personally if, if I were Mike, but he's brave and he did it. What would you give as a, a really good blind swag example of, of your day-to-day life. We all have, like, the story of, like, oh, I got into the wrong car. Yep. But, like, uh, have you done it when you were trying to buy drugs? <laughs> Mike. <laughs> I don't think anyone... <laughs> I don't... Before, before weed was legal, let's specify, because, you know... I don't want anyone to run with a narrative. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean. Uh, I don't think most people would admit to that, let alone have done that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, for sure. <laughs> um, yo, but the funniest one happened to me on St. Patrick's Day this year. Um, so I had my girlfriend's family over to her place, and I was making uh, Guinness beef um, pot pie situation, right? So. So I had the Guinness beef on, I had some potatoes going and stuff like that. Um, so I'm like uh, talking to people and cooking at the same time and drinking also, it, green drinks. Uh, so, and and I guess another uh, alter- like a thing of the story is that I'm, I'm very close with my girlfriend, like I'm down with PDA. Right, I like I like a I like a snuggle every once in a while. So um, I go, uh, I'm sitting beside my girlfriend, and then I go do some stove stuff, right, cooking stuff, and then I come back for a quick snuggle, and I keep going with my business. Later, they tell me, "Hey, you were snuggling with her mom." <laughs> die i can't breathe i don't know how that happened wait 
Wait, wait a second. Wait. There had to be clues. Not at all. That's clues, the worst Mike. part. I was completely lost when they told me. I was like, no way. No way. I was like, oh, God. Blind swag, though. You know, I just had to say blind swag, and it was okay. Like, that just... And everyone... Everyone's laughing their asses off, because I'm not that affectionate with other people. So... I can't. I can't. Everyone is dying, because they know that is out of pocket for me. Like, just... Oh, my God. So, so you say blind swag. Everyone knows what that means. Uh, Everyone. I, I didn't say it out loud. I said it to myself, and oh, I was like, it, okay. "It just makes me feel better." Like it's like, oh, yes, whatever. yes, yes. It, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. I I have so many questions. Yes, please. S- 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 how? There were no. There were no clues. Unfortunately, this, not. Was not your girlfriend. Unfortunately, not. That's the wild part. Yo, but the wilder okay, part okay, is she's wait, a twin. Okay. And it wasn't her sister. You're, oh my god. The twists just keep coming. She has an identical twin sister. And But nothing has happened there. Well, like smaller, like less uh crazy stuff has happened. <laughs> like I'd be walking up to her sister and her sister would be panicking like, uh, Bridget's over there, Bridget's over there. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she knows what I'm about to do. And she's like, no, stop, stop. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. My. No, so, yeah, smaller things like that have happened. But nothing crazy <laughs> with her, her twin. So that's it. But, yeah, no, her mom... Apparently, what did that, mom say? Um, what did mom say? Her, her mom was just like, "Well, can I get a full hug now?" <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a tease. MDB has so much blind swag. I think a little bit of it rubbed off on me. And blind swag is truly a powerful thing. If we can pick ourselves up and move past the embarrassment, move past the frustration, whether it's in the moment or whether it's later. Blind swag is a powerful thing, my friends. Number two on our top five low vision moments of 2023, my good friend, Dave Brown. Dave Brown is the host of Now With Dave Brown on AMI. It's a weekly live show. I also get to to work with Dave on that show a couple of times a month. And Dave and I make up, in part, the Albino Mafia. In episode number 29 called Albino Mafia, Dave and I really get into the definition of what the albino mafia could mean. You're going to have to go and listen or watch again to check that out. But Dave tells a story that I don't even know if I believe it's true. It's just so unbelievable that it's unbelievable. You're going to have to just judge for yourself. So when I was 18, 19 years old, there was another guy who was right about the same age, similar height, similar build, similar everything, and lived somewhere in NDG, somewhere in my neighborhood. Let's call it a 10 to 12 block radius of where I lived. So a lot of the same places that we'd end up going. And most of my family lived in that 10, 12 block radius as well. So my grandmother, who was in her early 80s at the time, went to the pharmacy at the Coats and Luke Shopping Center one day, and she spots an albino. And she thinks to herself, oh my gosh, that's David. I'm going to go say hi to my grandson. So she goes up to this to this guy and goes, hi, David, how are you? It's nice to see you. And he just completely blows her off. Like completely is like, who is this crazy old lady at the Cote Luke shopping center? What is happening over here? So I get home from school that night. And my dad is waiting for me in the house. And he goes, what did you do to your grandmother? And I'm like, what did I do to my grandmother? What, what did I do to grandmother? What's I don't know. With my grandmother? He's, he's like, you were at the Cote St. Luke shopping center today and you were so rude to her. Why would you do that? Good dad, I'm like, I'm in school all day. I've been in class since eight o'clock this morning. I'm getting home right now. I haven't been to the Cote St. Luke shopping center. And he goes, well, there was someone like you. And then my mom starts laughing in the kitchen. (laughs) And he goes, what's so funny? There's nothing funny about this. And she goes, Greg, it's the other neighborhood albino. (laughs) She saw the other neighborhood albino. It wasn't David. 
And then my dad starts laughing. Now, now getting my, my parents on board with this was not a problem, but uh, calling my grandmother and telling her, Grandma, you know, there's another albino in the neighborhood. It wasn't me. It was the other guy. Uh, I think to her dying day, she never truly believed she me. She didn't but believe me, you. That's but, sad. But let me tell you, the Coats and Luke uh, shopping center is where my gym was at the time. So a few weeks later, I was coming out of the gym and I was in that pharmacy <laughs> buying Powerade and my grandmother was there and I proactively <laughs> went to her. You I was better. like, Grandma, I was like, Grandma, it's Dave. Like, how are you? Now, here was my risk. It, very possibly might not have been my grandmother uh with considering my legal blindness and all but thankfully i guessed right and uh and 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 all was averted i think i think i got some brownie points that day (laughs) there you have it the albino mafia has spoken bizarro dave with all of his vibes has spoken And I had such a good conversation with Dave, the albino mafia, and and all of his wild encounters just made for a great time. Now, number one on our low vision moments, top low vision moments of 2023. This one's a little bit bittersweet for me to talk about. This one came in episode 28, number one top low vision moment of 2023 was in the episode Entertainment Value with Daryl Lennox. Daryl Lennox is a legend in stand-up comedy and in truly in in anyone I think who has experienced his presence or his comedy. He, um, He and I actually sat down twice to record our podcast episode because the first time Unfortunately, there were technical issues that could not be resolved. And I didn't know it at the time, but that second time that we got together to record was really a bit of a blessing in disguise. I got to spend a little bit of extra time with him. And I'm so grateful for that because not long after we recorded our episode, Daryl died suddenly and left this world. And uh, that certainly had a lot of impact on a lot of different communities. And I'm just so glad that I got to spend time with him and that his content is still out there for all of us to enjoy and to learn from. His album, Super Bloom, is incredible. You can purchase it. You can get it on your major platforms. Uh, And and his his specials, his stand-up specials, and his content is available online and on your streaming platform. So I highly encourage you to go and experience Daryl Lennox some more, even if you have heard that episode, Entertainment Value. He said so many poignant things in our conversations. It was really difficult to pick one story. So I chose this one because he describes himself as being let loose, let loose, like let go like a loose balloon rather in between the U S and Canada borders. And he had to find his way. And that's just like, it's kind of a metaphor for his whole existence and how, how unbothered he is and how great a partnership he describes having with his eyes and what they can and and cannot do for him. So here's that. And so it's been a ridiculously empowering experience and so anytime there are some shortcomings, when it does happen, it's almost like I still have a sense of humor. Like uh, this past March, when COVID was at this craziest moment, I got rejected from the board in Canada to come to my condo uh, here in Vancouver. And so they sent me, but they, so we walked across. So my assistant and the, uh, the guard is walking me. They had me walk me to straight to a line that we couldn't go past the line. Otherwise, we step into U.S. territory. So U.S. immigration is supposed to be waiting for me on the other side. They can't step across their line because then they've been Canadian there. So I'm in the middle of nowhere. On the way to go into this line, uh, I'm just traumatized. Like, I've been in Florida for three months. My brain's, I want to get home. I want to get to Vancouver. And uh, ran into a pole. Bang! Right in the middle for it. And I was like, oh, my. And I wanted to cry. But it's almost like my eyes said, hey, there are way tougher things than this you have to deal with. Bang! So they let me loose like a balloon and I have to wander some hundred yards or meters towards from one Canadian fisherman to an American. And they both yell at me opposite direction. Okay, go to the left, which is right, go right. And, and so I was just weaving with my suitcase and my show shoes on and my stick and a bag on my back. 
wand into the abyss between two countries. And again, if my eyes had worked at all by then, I would probably be crying and freaking out, but I had to be so aware of trying to get to the right voice. And so I feel so, I feel like I'm in great partnership with my eyes, no matter what, always felt like that way. Instead of resisting them, now they're like, okay, man, you got it from here. And eventually I found the right country. I'm amazed that in, even in the moment, you're able to have such a strong sense of self. I'm, I'm amazed because there are so many, th I've, I've been there, I've hurt myself, I've conked my head, I've fallen downstairs. And, and it, it usually in the, okay, I think I'm getting better, but in the moment, I probably would still cry, you know? Um, so I'm just impressed by your, you just have, have such a strong sense of self. And if I can take anything away from our conversation, I think it's, it's that, and, and I'm starting to learn this too, I think, as I, as I am more of an open book, as I said, about my visual impairment, but there is real power in just using your past experiences as a point of reference in life. Like if I can fall off my bike and get a head injury and come out of that A-OK -okay and then start up a tandem biking program for other people who are blind or visually impaired, right. you know, we can do anything now. That's right. Surely, you know, sure, surely I can figure out the next thing. So I think there's so much power in that and – and, and I just, I'm so grateful that you are doing what you do because again, we want to be part of that satire. We want to be included and you do such a fine job of doing that. And, uh, I just want to say thank you, thank you. <laughs> for including well, us and continuing to do what you do. Please don't stop. I can't. How could I? I can't. How could I? I won't. Daryl Lennox is, again, a legend, and I'm, again, so grateful for the time I got to spend with him. I took a lot away, again, from our conversations, and one big thing I took away that he said was that he enjoys being sort of the connective tissue between the blind and visually impaired community and those of us with that lived experience, and, and also the people who do not have that connection, who do not have that lived experience or that personal connection to blindness or visual impairment. He wants to be the connective tissue. And I really felt that. And I really think that we should all try to be more unbothered and, and have that great partnership w with what our eyes can and cannot do for us. And when we can take the chance to be that connective tissue, to be that connect connecting force, um, in, in our communities, respectfully. I don't feel right, however, about leaving this episode on such a serious note. So I want to leave you quickly with my one of my first low vision moments of 2024. It is not the first one, but certainly one that stands out for here early in the year. I go to the gym once a week. The last time I went, I said to myself, this year, Jenny, you're going to hit the sauna in between the workout and the shower perfect. I'm going to do it. Usually I take my, my glasses with me into the shower stall and I put them in my waterproof bag. I do not want to leave those puppies unattended. They're very expensive. They're an investment. So this time I knew that I would be leaving my stuff in the shower stall while I'm in the sauna for a few minutes. So I did not want to leave my glasses unattended in the shower stall even if they're in a bag, didn't want to do it. So I left them locked up safely in my locker. Well, it turns out I need those glasses, very much need those glasses to open up my combination lock on my locker. It's high contrast. I've had it for 10 years, but I could not see a damn thing on that combination lock. Luckily, and this is one of those unbelievable things, 10 years of experience with this combination lock, I did it all through muscle memory, <laughs> but I will not be leaving my glasses in my locker ever again. I'm going to have to figure out another solution. I want to thank you so much for listening and watching and subscribing. 
And I would love to hear from you. What do you want to hear from us? What do you want to see from us? What stories do you want in 2024? Do you want to be a guest on the podcast? I want to hear you. I want to hear from all of you. You can get in touch by adding a comment on YouTube. You can send an email to podcasts at ami.ca, or you can even give us a call at 1-866-509-4545. One more time, that phone number is one 509 4545 Make sure to mention Low Vision Moments in that message, please, and thank you. You can come and follow me if you'd like. I would love that. I'm on Instagram. Instagram and TikTok. I'm there under Uber Blonde 4. That is U B E R B L O N D E and the number four. Marco Flalo is our technical producer. Ryan Dillahanty is our podcast coordinator. Manager at AMI Audio is Andy Frank. Our theme song is by the incredible band Out of Controller, and that's spelled O U T T A C O N T R O L L E R. Go and find them online. You won't be disappointed. And until next time, my friends, always bring your glasses. Just always bring them. 